but I have so many people asking me, uh, and as a patriotic American, I, I certainly have to think about it, but it wasn't what I was thinking about when I retired. Never really is. Every day here on Midpoint, we'll be talking with members of the Newsmax Media family, those experts and analysts who share their opinions and exclusive news at our website, www.newsmax.com. And there is attached to that the Newsmax magazine. Joining us here to debut this week's magazine cover story to tell more about what's inside, Newsmax senior editor David Patton joins us on Midtime, uh, Midpoint. David, pleasure Good to have you Good to be here. with you. Thank you. Talk a little bit about Ben Carson here because he sits right up there front on the Newsmax magazine in a rather wide-ranging interview, but certainly leaves an awful lot of places to go. Oh, yeah. So he's the cover story for our edition this month, June edition of Newsmax magazine. A uh, fascinating guy, a lot of buzz that he may run now for the GOP nomination in 2016. And what's great about this piece that we have is an exclusive interview with him and also an exclusive inter uh, excerpt from his new book, One Nation, in which he reveals the fact and talks about the inside story that President Obama's team at the White House apparently called him within 15 minutes of that National Prayer Day uh, speech that we've all mm -hmm. heard so much about and asked him to apologize. And his response was, well, when I talked with the president, he didn't seem to be insulted and I don't see anything to apologize for, so I'm not going to. So, of course, that sort of propelled him really into the front ranks of GOP presidential contenders, arguably. What kind of person is he? I mean, give us a little bit because we've had a chance now to, to get to know him through his, his book here and his interview with Newsmax, but give us a sense of, of the man himself. Very soft-spoken, brilliant. A lot of people don't realize that he has pioneered pediatric neurosurgery techniques that really are used now around the world by the top uh, pediatric neurosurgeons has literally saved lives with his extraordinary career. Uh, a very spiritually driven man. In fact, he says whether he runs or not in 2016 will depend in part on whether he feels called by God to do that. So, uh, you know, really what you see is what you get with him. And in that sense, a very unconventional political figure, I think you could say. And now let's talk about the presidency, mm -hmm. because there are people who are starting to mm -hmm. make some waves about the possibility here. So what's the reality of this? What do you think his, his real possibility lies? The real key, obviously, getting the nomination. So could he get the GOP nomination in 2016? Now, he doesn't have experience as a political office holder. So initially you think, hey, that's going to be too big a barrier to, he to leap. But then again, on the other hand, there's so much dissatisfaction with Washington, uh, Congress, all the institutions, really, that maybe that leaves an opening for somebody who comes in and promises to do it differently. It was very, very interesting that about a week ago at the Republican Leadership Conference in New Orleans, they did the big straw poll, who would you prefer to be the GOP nominee in 2016? And of course, everybody knows Ted Cruz won that. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is Ted Cruz got 30.3% of that vote, and Dr. Ben Carson plays second with 29.4. In other words, he was less than 1% away from Senator Ted Cruz, kind of the hot name in GOP politics these days. All right, so that's on the cover. Let's go ahead and turn to what I, I find is a fascinating story to watch, Dirty Politics, the mm -hmm. War Against right. the Cokes. Yeah. I, I actually did this this weekend. I, I had some time and I was researching some stories and Googled Koch Brothers. Wait for your computer to explode is, is what will happen any single time because I'm sure you find this too as you're researching stories for Newsmax magazine. There is a war against the Koch brothers. There mm -hmm. is no doubt about yeah. it. Um, but it's the motive mm -hmm. that I think people mm -hmm. are still wondering about. Mm -hmm. How much clearer can we, can we make that? Well, in the magazine article that we have in the June edition, which is available on Newsmax.com, uh, we actually draw a very clear cause and effect line in what this underlying motivation is. And we go back to the 2010 midterms when Democrats knew that a lot of the metrics looked bad for them and they were in big trouble. So what did they do? They had to do a couple of things. One, have populist proposals, higher minimum wage, uh, war on women, things like that. But on the other hand also to look for a villain, to find somebody to sort of paint with a big broad negative brush that everybody could then presumably take out their anger. Why a big smoke screen to have people look away from the fact that we have you know, just huge n unemployment in the country. Even today, if you include the underemployed and the people who want jobs can't find them, it's up over 12%, so historically high numbers. 
So uh, the first effort, kind of uh, 1.0, if you will, was to look at AFP, Americans for Prosperity, mm -hmm. a yep. shadowy group, a secret group manipulating politics, except that they have three million members, and if you want to know what positions they advocate, you can look on a website I was thinking maybe out. they're the Illuminati, perhaps. There you, know? you go, exactly. <laughs> That's kind of the, the idea, the implication. By the time 2012 came around, they rolled out, the Democrats did 2.0 of that a kind of attack strategy. And this time the villain role was played by Mitt Romney. You may remember that USA Priorities ad mm -hmm. where they claimed that uh, Mitt Romney and Bain Capital was, were somehow responsible for the death of a woman because a steel plant had been killed, a, a charge that PolitiFact, the fact-finding organization later declared, was just preposterous. Uh, but in any case, they were able to make some of those negative aspersions stick against Mitt Romney. So here we are, flash forward the next election, and this time it's the Koch brothers. They're being demonized by Harry Reid on the floor of the Senate every day. And again, uh, the idea here is to kind of conceal, distract, and get people to, to pour their anger uh, someplace other than the People are in power, the Democratic politicians, the incumbents. The question, obviously, is, is this strategy going to work? And it's interesting that a lot of Democratic strategists and Democratic senators and congresspeople are upset with this strategy. They say, you know, there's really no reason to think this is going to work. Uh, we're sailing to the edge of a cliff, and the best you guys can do is complain about the Koch brothers? And let's put it this way, too. I mean, the Koch brothers certainly have a lot of money. There's a lot mm. of people out there who have a lot of money. This is one group, to be fair, with a lot of money spent in mm -hmm. their own interests. Mm -hmm. But if you start putting a lot of the rest together, and I know that in the Newsmax mm -hmm. magazine you have a chart that shows yeah. all these other gazillionaires who are out there throwing money at everything that's special interest to them, Republican and Democrat. Sure, absolutely. There's a lot so of money it's, there. So it's not one party. And that's what's kind of frustrating, I think, to the right uh, and to the conservative media is, you know, you have, for example, uh, George Soros is the obvious example, the uh, financial currency speculator uh, who has spent $27 million, for example, to uh, try to defeat George Bush in 2004 and is involved in so many Democratic uh, liberal left organizations trying to, you know, get his way, trying to influence the political process. On, on the right, uh, more center right, Sheldon Adelson, a tremendous uh, proponent of Israel and a strong policy to defend Israel. And uh, he spent, I believe, over $90 million to promote his causes in the last election cycle. So it really goes on and on. You have people like Jeffrey Katzenberg, for example, the Hollywood producer, Shrek and pa Kung Fu Panda and so forth. Uh, he and George Clooney held a dinner party, the one dinner party, in the last cycle that raised over $15 million for President Obama. So, you know, it's just not on one side of the aisle, so why not look at both sides if you're going to? And that's really why we put that list in the magazine, because if you're going to single out the Koch brothers, well then let's show the rest. At everybody involved in this. Exactly. A couple minutes we got left here. Also something else I noticed, there's two different books on the life of mm -hmm. John Wayne. And w what could be different? Don't we? I, I hate. I'm, not, I'm mm. a John Wayne fan, but don't we already mm. know everything we we knew about John Wayne? Obviously not. There's so much more to the man. Well, there's a terrific biography out by Scott Iman, the former Palm Beach Post book reviewer and now uh, recorder of Hollywood lives and biographies, and he takes a very in-depth look into John Wayne, the Duke, talks about a lot of Hollywood stories. Really gives you a a movie by movie perspective of John Wayne, kind of more from the Hollywood angle. And then you combine that with another book that's out about the Duke, the Longhorns, and Chairman Mao. Fascinating Wait title. a minute, hang on a second. You just yeah. put Chairman Mao yeah, in the yeah. same sentence as John Wayne. We, I, th I think we've run off a cliff here somewhere. And, that's and, impossible. And the Texas Longhorns. <laughs> so there is actually a, a, docu a documented attempt by the Soviets during the Soviet era and most people are unaware of this, but they talk about it in, in this book, uh, to assassinate John Wayne. And the, ironically, the confirmation for that in part uh, came from uh, Chinese filmmakers who talked to American filmmakers, people like Orson Welles. But at one point, the FBI was actually keeping John Wayne under surveillance and uh, turned up a plot uh, to actually uh, 
uh, assassinate the great John Wayne. It was actually a Soviet plot, and it sounds far-fetched, but all the details are there in the book. Wow. Uh, just a couple seconds. We have left a favorite John Wayne movie, I have to ask you. Oh. Um, Got to pick one. You know, I'm, I, I, this is going to make me politically unpopular, but I grew up during the Green Beret era of okay. Vietnam, so so I think that would be one. And then, of course, the, the great John Ford movies also. See, I go a little bit later in life. I'll <laughs> go with McClintock. Okay. Just, a, just a fun movie is all it was, but uh, I had so many to pick from. Uh, yep. Let's remind mm -hmm. everybody again that is the new edition of Newsmax. You can read everything on Newsmax.com. Make sure you get it all there. Mr. Patton, it is a yeah. pleasure, sir. Great to see we you. will do that again. Look you also, to. sir. Thanks so Thank much you. for coming by. When we return, the Midpoint team breaks down today's news and later cyber threats and energy companies. How much should we worry? Uh, do yourself a favor. Start worrying now. Midpoint continues.